High Point family. It's Sister Tony McKenzie, and I bring you greetings from Apostle Thomas and First Lady Carolyn Vinson. It's another Wednesday that the Lord has kept us, and we are so happy and glad about it. It is Bible study time. Grab those phones, those iPads, paper, and pens, and let's get ready for Bible study. Uh, while you're at it, please hit your share buttons and invite someone to watch along with you. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to introduce tonight's speaker. It is none other than our own Elder Joseph Whitaker. We ask that you sit attentively and pay attention as he brings forth tonight's lesson. Stay tuned. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm Elder Joseph Whitaker, and I would like to thank my pastors, Apostle Thomas and Dr. Carolyn Vincent, for giving me this opportunity to share just a brief Bible study with you this evening. I'm excited about uh, what I believe God will say to his people tonight. But first, what I'd like to do is just go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord. This was a beautiful day that you've made, and we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, for how you have covered us and protected us, Lord God. We thank you for meeting every need. And Father, we just give you honor and glory, Lord, for being Lord of Lord and King of Kings, uh, the, God, the God of our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for this time uh, you've given us to look into your word, Lord God, and to uh, hear what you would say to your people tonight. We love you, Father, and we thank you for your love and kindness. We give you glory and honor now in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank God. Amen. Well, tonight, I believe we have... Uh, uh, an exciting few minutes ahead of us. Uh, we're going to tonight be looking at the book of Habakkuk, uh, looking at the third chapter. Uh, I'll be reading from the 17th through the 19th verses. And I'd like for you to uh, find that and go with me as I read, please. And it says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds' feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. This passage actually hinges on the word yet, Y-E-T. Yet implies that in spite of what we see before our very eyes, the Lord in his sovereignty may choose to rearrange things and bring things about in a totally different way to create the outcome that pleases him. The Word of God promises that no matter what it may look like, what it may sound like or feel like, all things are working together for our good. And I'm always looking for the good, saints, aren't you? The word yet further suggests and indicates that while one thing is happening over here, there's a whole nother thing happening over there. The word yet is trying to tell us that we should patiently wait until we know the end of the story. There's more and we need to know the rest. During World War II, a newsman by the name of Paul Harvey had nightly radio broadcasts chronicling the story of the World War. He, he always began his new cat newscast by saying, and now the rest of the story. In other words, you may have heard the Japanese bombed our ships in Pearl Harbor and they won the battle, 
But you need to know the rest of the story. The United States went on to win the war. The word yet tells us that there is more. Genesis 41 verse 56 tells us, And the famine was over all the face of the earth. Joseph opened storehouses, bursting out with corn, and sold food unto the Egyptians. Yes, there was a famine, and yes, people were dying of starvation, but the Bible tells us Joseph had storehouses bursting out with corn, and he sold food to the Egyptians. And in the book of Exodus, Pharaoh's kingdom was being rocked and plagued uh, by lice, locusts, darkness, stone, hailstones. And in Exodus 10, 21-23, it reads that the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. He saw not, they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. The Bible said that it was so dark in Egypt that the people couldn't see each other, and they sat quietly, they sat still for three whole days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then there was the plague of hell. The Bible says hell was unleashed on the Egyptians where it battered and destroyed both animal and plant life. Exodus 26, the 21st verse, 22nd verse says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord set thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with hail, very grievous such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. And verse 26 tells us then the rest of the story. It says, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. Now, Goshen was a very special place. I call it God's hiding place, uh, the secret place of the Most High, uh, being in the shadow of the Almighty. Before the Exodus, God used Joseph to place the children of Israel in Goshen, a quiet pastoral region in lower, lower Egypt where they had protection and security. Goshen is described in one definition as a land or place of plenty, peace, and comfort. Now as we look around us today, we might see death, people suffering from health issues and disease, we see financial collapse, we see natural disasters, and sometimes it might look even hopeless, saints. But the Lord God tells us, and he admonishes us, to always look for the good. Romans 8, 24, 28 says that we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, 
why doth he yet, yet hope for? 1 Corinthians 15, 19, For if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. And then 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 tells us not to just focus on what we see, but that through the Holy Ghost God can show us which, which, what truly exists, the things that truly exist that we can't see with our natural eyes. For the things which are seen are temporal, the Bible says, but the things which are not seen, those are eternal. What the Lord is trying to tell us tonight is, no matter what happens, we have hope. We don't have to be afraid to step out in faith. We have hope. We can still walk by faith and not by sight. We have hope. We can step out of the boat, saints. We have hope. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Little faith, little power. Much faith, much power. No faith, no power. Sometimes in the face of turbulent circumstances, saints, we might be tempted to throw our hands up, cower, cringe, pull back in fear, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Lord wants to remind us tonight that no matter what we're going through, we are not alone. We have hope. Let me hear you say it. We have hope. And beyond that, say, I have hope. No, we don't have all the answers, but we do have hope. We serve a sovereign and a risen and a living Savior. His name is Jesus. There is a song that says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Thirty-two years ago now, my wife and I moved to Atlanta from the Washington, D.C. area. She was a university professor. I was a news reporter. Our mortgage was almost paid off. Our bills were always paid on time. We were invited to Atlanta to operate uh, an outreach ministry specializing in teaching unemployed inner city residents the basic skills they needed to get employment. And after we taught the course, we also helped them to go out and get jobs at businesses throughout the city. And before we left Washington, the Lord promised us that if we did come to Atlanta, he would give us more than we had ever had and that we would have an opportunity to share life. But a year after we began our work in Atlanta, the owners of the school announced bankruptcy. They closed the school. Both my wife and I found ourselves unemployed. Our one-year lease on the house we had was about to run out. Our car was repossessed. And I ended up standing in a food stamp line. Saints, I knew that couldn't be the end of the story for us. Throughout our ordeal, most of the saints had no idea what we were going through. Every day we got up, we washed our faces, we oiled our hair, we smiled broadly and continued to glorify and praise the Lord. We continued to tithe. We never missed even one service, saints. We continued to glorify the source of our supply. Jesus promised he would give us more than we had ever had, and we simply believed him. He said he would never leave us or forsake us, and saints, we simply believed the Lord. In the midst of all that was going on, co-pastor Carolyn Vincent preached a prophetic message. I'll never forget it. The message said, God is taking you down to bring you up. God is taking you down to bring you up. Well, it wasn't long and the Lord told us to go looking for a house. In my heart and mind, uh, I was thinking, but Lord, both of us are unemployed. And the Lord said, you just go looking. 
Well, we found a house we really like. It costs five times more than the house we had purchased in the Washington area. We said, well, maybe we can lease this house and uh, eventually buy it. But when we went to talk to the owner, he adamantly said, no, I want you to buy the house. I don't want to lease it. And he introduced us to a lender who approved our new mortgage on the basis of our income earning potential, even though we were unemployed. Never seen it before, haven't seen it since. And from our family's dwindling savings, we made a down payment of $25,000. Three days after we closed on the house, the man came back and gave, gave $10,000 back to us. He said he wanted us to be able to take good care of our family while we were looking for new employment. This also helped us to get our daughter enrolled and settled into her first year at the University of Georgia. The man told us we could pay him back at a rate that was comfortable for us. I knew that had to be Jesus. A short, term, a short time after that, God gave, us, gave me a new job making a great income. Saints, just because uh, just based on my own experiences, me and my wife, we are definitely witnesses that God is a promise keeper. He will not leave you or forsake you. If he said he'll do it, he will do it. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. Truly, God is faithful. In tonight's scripture, the prophet Habakkuk tells us there were no figs on the fig tree, no grapes on the grapevine. The olive tree had failed, and the fields had not produced any crops. Habakkuk said even the flocks had not been fruitful, and where he used to have plenty of cattle and sheep to sustain his family, there were no herds in the stall. Habakkuk seemed to be painting a pretty grim picture of nothing but hopelessness, lack, and despair. Until he says the word, yet. By faith he seemed to know there was more to the story. Instead of all, in, in spite of all Habakkuk had seen with his natural eyes, in the spirit I believe he saw a glorious supernatural eternal blessing on the way. In verse 18 Habakkuk says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He went on to say in verse 19, The Lord God is my strength. I don't have strength, but the Lord God is my strength. And he will still make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to be sure-footed and confident. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. He's promised me higher heights, deeper depths, and he's keeping his promise. He is certain to, to do everything that he said he'd do. Saints, you can always trust the Lord to keep his promises. If he said it, he indeed will do it. And if he spoke it, he will definitely bring it to pass. Praise God. Well, that's what the Lord gave me for tonight, saints. I pray that your hearts were encouraged, and uh, let's all just stand on the promises of the Lord, because he's truly faithful. God bless you. We would like to thank Elder Joseph Whitaker for that wonderful Bible study on tonight. We hope that that message has left you blessed, challenged, and changed. It is now giving time at the point. If you would like to give online, you can go to our website, highpointlive.org, click on the giving link, and follow the instructions from there. If you desire to send in your giving by way of mail, you can send it to High Point Christian Tabernacle, P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia, 30081. Again, we hope that you were blessed by tonight's message. Uh, we hope that you enjoy the rest of your evening. And Lord willing, we will see you all on Sunday. God bless.